It's been a while. Here today with the Tier 8 Japanese Tech Tree Cruiser Shokaku in the 0.8.5 world. We're in 7 to 9 matchmaking, so we're middle tier, and we got a heck of a game ahead of us. I'm gonna start by launching my rocket planes. So we got a Benham and Ognevoy for destroyers, and then. Georgia JB, Monarch Knight, nice, Nastarn nice Horse. Not too bad here, but Georgia and Jombar are obviously going to be a bit problematic. And Rune Shapai of Atlanta. So, 0 0.8.5, we have the AA changes implemented. So, now AA continuous damage all focuses its damage on one plane at a time. So, we're going to notice a lot more plane losses. Uh, but otherwise, not too much else has changed in general. It has become quite a bit more difficult, but that's not to say that carriers are in a bad spot. If you know what you're doing, it's still more than fine enough, and if people leave their AA on, sure, they might chew up a few of your planes, but it's not too bad. Mistimed my attack there, but that is fine. Venture over, already right, smoking. As you can see here, even the casual AA from the Atlanta and the Chapayev is trimming my rocket planes. Sean Horst up there, huh? So we were unable to get the attack on the Ogden way off, he turned his AA off, so we had to go in a bit blind. We launched a bit too late, and so because he ran straight at us, we ended up missing him. He also got some fighter cover, and there's an Atlanta behind him. However, he did have to smoke early, which means when he touches the cap, we'll be able to push him out of it eventually, since he won't have smoke. So that is fine. As you notice, even the casual AA from the Atlanta, who did pop defensive fire, and the Chapayev and Monarch and Ognevoy, who I presume turned his AA back on after he popped his smoke, is enough to chew up our planes. I am going to top the smoke here. What do we have here? Rune and a shot horse. Rune launched her fighter. So A is contested. Let's see if I can push this Mahan out. Pop my heal here. You'll notice that I'm taking quite a few losses. You can see that the heal has lost quite a bit of utility. Just spotting this guy will be enough, so I will pop a fighter for him. The Atlanta is on the side there, but I am going to try it for the last strike. Alright, we tagged the fighter, unfortunate. Can't get out yet, so... Game's not going too hot, per se. So the Augie is inside of B. It's probably hovering right here with the Tripive. But I will launch my rocket planes and see if I can do something about it anyway. The Atlanta has moved north. My team is shoving south, so... I will shove down. So if you just, just tip in, the easiest thing is for him to curve out northwards toward the sea cap, so that is where I expect him to go. So I expect him to be right about here. Cap only recently finished. Let's see if he left his AA on. I'm probing. Mahan is still there. Don't have eyes on the Ognevoy. Sejan Bar. Chapayev again. Alright, so we lost the Ognevoy. Nothing we can do about that. In the meantime, I'm going to try and set fire. Still have my 30 millimeters of penetration, so you see we got a couple shatters. A is not too bad, but before we probably wouldn't have lost any planes. This time we lost two. We did find the Ognevoy, however. So let's see if we can use what's left of our squadron and get in that rocket strike that we wanted initially. His AA is still off. Fortunately, our teammate has found him for us, and a nice 5k rocket strike. Now the Monarch had a fire, 
So we're gonna follow up with our torpedo bombers. Reserves looking pretty good. Low on rocket planes because of the first strike attempt when we expended all nine of them, but such is the way of things. So you'll notice it's been a slow game, haven't been able- my first two strikes were pretty unsuccessful, but all is not lost. We are losing more planes than we would have before, but smash making is still not overly unfavorable, so I have full expectations that we will be able to recover at a given time. So you saw there, one plane died rather quickly in spite of the light AA. I'm just gonna pop the heal now. Alright, that is um detonation on recording. Nice to see. Obviously a bit unfortunate for him, and fortunate for us. Chapayev does... Chapayev is actually quite slow for a light cruiser, so we're not gonna lead him too much. Those look good. Nice on target torpedoes. Hit him with the flood, however, we are flying right over the Sean Horse. And while the Sean Horse AA is pretty whatever, still more than potent enough. I'm gonna hunt that Ognevoy. He has smoked up, but he might be leaving north. Oh, okay, let me fix that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Peter planes going for the Oigan more than likely. He's pushed out, he's alone, he's only a tier 8, his AA is pretty whatever. So naturally, the Lexington's going for him. He is already turning away though, so I anticipate he'll be fine. He might take one torpedo there. Looks like he de-armed it. There's plenty of support from the Nice now there, so there's almost no reason to Give him the fighter. Now the Lexington over there has found the Ognavoy for us. Although this is going to be a bit difficult because of the smoke. Unfortunately you saw as we approached from over the smoke we weren't able to get a good glimpse at the Augie because we lost vision. He's popped his defensive fire, you can see from the hot orange flag. Just going to try for our one strike here. 4,000 is not bad at all, I'm not complaining about that. Relaunch with our torpedo bombers. We haven't reached for our AP dive bombers here because the only real viable targets are the Scharnhorst, maybe the Georgia over there, and they're all kind of distant. We've really been focusing our game on harassing this Ognavoy and picking on targets that stray too far forward. We are about to regain B control. We lost it to that Ognavoy that we've been harassing earlier in the match, but as this match progresses, we will likely take it back right now. I'm going to drop a fighter over the Alaska to prevent him from being harassed. So, the only suitable target here that I want to strike is either the Scharnhorst or the Georgia. Unfortunately, the Scharnhorst is not at all isolated. He's pretty close to a whole bunch of cruisers and such, so I'm going to drop the Georgia. Now, the Georgia being a Iowa Hall does have a decent AA suite, so I am going to first turn away and pre-drop. Alright, I'm actually going to try for this rune, because he's presenting a decent target here. Pop my heal to sustain myself. Alright, doesn't look like we'll be able to get the rune, so we're going to abort that mission. We did plan to expend all of those torpedo planes anyway, all four of them. So we'll drop that Lexington since he wasn't moving. Nice easy target, I don't know if they're going to hit. Alright, we hit one, so he was probably still moving forward. It looked like he was static, but it is kind of hard to judge these things sometimes. Alright, so the situation has changed somewhat. The Sean Horse is separated from the John Bart. The John Bart is probably the most potent AA ship in this match. However, he is alone, so it's either him or the Georgia. Now my Lexington has selected the Georgia as his target. I'm going to go for the JB because I can go at him over this mountain which might save my planes, if I'm lucky. Taking a bit of stray flak from the Atlanta. That's fine, so I'm over this mountain. Normally his AA mounts would have already engaged me. 
But because of the mountain, I get to get right in close. It's gonna recall immediately, no need to watch. Let's see if those planes get out. I might actually have that last plane escape. Oh, not quite the modernized Sean Bart AA suite. Chewing through my plane health. So that is a bit tragic. So, overall thoughts on the AA changes? I haven't really gone into a deep discussion. Just some standard Shokaku gameplay, the damage has gone up. Uh, overall, the changes are probably in the right direction, although philosophy wise. Um, they do pose some questions. Essentially, the old model wanted you to do several strikes, and you, the incentive to not pre dropping and bringing a larger squadron was that you got to spread AA damage out over multiple planes. So, if you had a bigger squadron, because planes are randomly selected to take ticks of constant DPS, then a bigger squadron would have more survivability. Now, because it's always the last plane in the squadron gets focused down as a mechanic. Um, there is basically no difference between pre-dropping and bringing the whole squadron, except that when you bring the whole squadron, you're risking the whole squadron all at once. Since it's always this back plane that takes damage, the difference between having 8 planes and 4 planes, for example, in this case, is nothing, because my last plane still always has the same static amount of health. And I'm coming in at this genre at an awkward angle, but he is turning to avoid torpedoes, so I can anticipate He's going to continue turning out. He might not, though. But in any case, I'm going to pop the heal just because I'm here. Got one torpedo on the end. Not bad at all. Come in for my kill here. In any case, philosophy-wise, I don't agree with it because the whole model ha of having your drop damage split over multiple parts of the squadron is completely destroyed by this AA change. Yes, certainly it means that planes actually get shot down now, which is definitely something that needed to happen. But the kind of goals of the rework system were lost because of the way this new AA is implemented, which is kind of disappointing. And as FDG is getting farmed, I'm going to provide a cover for this Alaska since he is doing a concerted push. And I'm going to bring six planes for this nice now. I like the Sean Horse, his AA is decent, but not special for a tier 7 since I'm a tier 8. He might get a fighter, but I'm going to bring six planes to make sure that all of my planes make it in. Make sure I get what I want. So not the right angle, but that's fine. I'm gonna pull away. In the meantime, I can also scout the other carrier. Relaunch. You can see my rocket plane reserves have slowly been climbing after the initial uh, losses. And we've climbed back to a quite reasonable damage number. You can see my potential damage climbing slightly as people damage the noise now, which is apparently being spotted by my airplane. So now the Alaska has gotten pretty close. I want to strike the noise now, but I am going to provide the Alaska with further air cover because of how close he is to the two carriers. He's very likely to get harassed, so this is one of the few cases where it's worth going out of your way to give him some cover. So I gave him the fighter, now I'm going to swing back around for that knights now. I am at an awkward angle now, but I have plenty of engine boost consumables, or engine cooling consumables. Left over, it's been a fairly slow game. Swing around, adjust my angle, and now we can go in. He may or may not survive this Lexington attack, depends how accurate Lexington is, it does look like a 3 torpedo strike. Oops, something happened to one of the torps. Don't have the right angle. Looks like, as well, that the Atlanta popped his defensive fire, lost another plane, slowly the chip damage from the knife now, even though it's not that significant, does add up. I'm swatted by the enemy rocket planes, that's fine. This should also be a finishing strike. And I'm gonna actually launch my rocket planes for the Atlanta, just for convenience sake. Shokaku's gonna attack me, but that is fine.
Halt my last engine boot cooling consumable. He used a defensive fire to help defend the knights now. So this should be fairly elementary. Right on target. And a very simple kill to wrap up the game. So, as you saw, the game started slow. Bungled my first two strikes, mainly due to the density of AA fire, however, my damage did climb back up, even though I essentially did not have damage for the first three minutes of the g game. Got four kills, two fires, one flood, 11 torpedo strikes, four bomb strikes did not really reach for the AP dive bombers this game, mainly torpedo hits and rocket work. 40 rocket strikes, one citadel, 10 planes shot down in total, and 14 spotting ribbons with a devastating strike due to the very, very unlucky monarch. Team score wise, an unsurprising 2100 base. Crushing some kids. As Allied Lexington does not seem to have done particularly much, although the enemy carriers seem to have been similarly unex uh, unsuccessful. If you go to the detailed report, you can see that we did the one bomb strike, which was a fine bomb strike, four bombs. Well, this is actually two bomb strikes. Right, so we had that one single citadel hit bomb strike on the Georgia, I believe, and then another bomb strike on... shoot. It's hard for me to grow, recall. It might have been the Shawn Horse. But that only had penetrations, so not too much damage there. Torpedoes, 83,000, again showing off the potency of the Japanese Long Lance. Obviously, 26 released, 11 hit. It's not horrible, but it's honestly pretty good, especially since a lot of these torpedoes were expended against stalling out the Mahan at sea. We weren't very successful there, but it's good enough. And then 18,000 on rockets. 40 hits in spite of 102 launched rockets, again showing off how their overall damage over the course of the game is kind of low. You reach for them when you have to, and when it, or when it's convenient, but not otherwise. 6,500 from fires, not too bad at all. You can see here we expended a whole bunch of torpedo bombers, high amount of rocket planes, not too many dive bombers, mainly because we didn't reach for them. So the monarch detonation, and then everywhere else just mostly chip damage. Chip damage on the Jean Bar, chip damage on Chapayev. Rocket damage on the Atlanta, Scharnhorst, and Nice now with twin torpedo strikes each respectively to finish them off. Chip damage on the Georgia, so just a lot of chip damage here and there adding up. But you can see here from the aircraft loss that we are losing a lot of planes, 63 planes over the course of the match. But yeah, we're in the zero point we're in the 0 0.8.5 world. We lose a lot more planes, but that doesn't mean carriers are unplayable. In fact, they're still perfectly fine, probably in a healthier spot than before. I don't like the changes on a mechanics basis just because goes against the philosophy of the rework, but as an overall package in terms of gameplay health, it is definitely a step in the right direction. But yeah, there you have it. Shokaku 0.8.5, not dead. Not dead at all. Hope you enjoyed. Cheers.